The Pacific is one of the areas most rich in languages in the world. And the way to maintain that is to teach the new skills of literacy, which are not in our tradition, in the vernacular. And it's recognized also that that's the way to achieve the highest literacy rates is also from other experiences around the world. So that is something we need to move towards. And many countries are already there. Uh, Vanuatu, we are not there yet. Uh, we do do vernacular literacy in classroom in some year ones, but not, not across the whole country. So it's become a policy that we need to implement vernacular literacy. And it's something that uh, I hope we progress quite fast so that we do maintain languages as the vehicle for culture, which is the first, uh, first step. Also, of course, we need to have a curriculum in schools that recognizes and uses and promotes traditional knowledge. And we have developed in Vanuatu, for example, modules of uh, teaching science, where half is Western-derived science and half is traditional knowledge-derived science and showing how traditional knowledge science has the same value and has the same explanatory power as Western science, but in a different way. So using specific examples, developing specific, specific uh, modules around things, for example, like um, uh, conservation measures for the marine environment. Uh, why traditional measures that were uh, promoted on ideals of, for example, uh, someone dies, therefore the, uh, the passage or the place the, where they have a beach or a, a seafront area is closed off to utilization for a year or two. Uh, what's the ex explanation of that in terms of Western science uh, conservation? And, these, and showing how these measures traditionally were used for the effect of achieving conservation. So there are some of the kinds of things that we need to encourage in schools. We also need, of course, uh, to place much greater emphasis on uh, in traditional environmental management techniques and also uh, traditional agriculture, because these are the two foundations of the sustainability of our societies. And we need to be able to know how to adapt to climate change. And the best tools we have for adapting climate change is traditional knowledge, because traditional knowledge is something that is built on observations of the environment. So we need to develop a um, I suppose you could say a co-cultural approach to education in which we take the best of uh, the Western education and combine it with the best traditional, traditional knowledge and use them both as a way of showing uh, our children both have value. That's both in terms of environmental management but also in terms of agriculture because agriculture remains how most Pacific Islands sustain themselves. Regardless of this cash economy and everything, most Pacific Islands still survive day to day on their gardens. And one of the failures of traditional education uh, system that we've inherited from the West is there's no emphasis on agriculture. It's all about working in offices. And we've got to get away from that because there's never going to be enough jobs. And also, the agriculture is the thing that sustained us for all this time and it will continue to sustain us into the future, regardless of how the world economy goes. So that's some of my comments on agriculture. Uh, in relation to land title and, and land grabbing, uh, what, what kind of policies do you think the Vanuatu government and governments around the Pacific should have around indigenous land title? Well, as the new Minister for Lands in Vanuatu, I've just been the Minister about a month now, one of my main uh, priorities is to reform land law, to really enshrine customary tenure over land. Uh, that goes against the grain of what Australia, New Zealand and you know, the World Bank and everyone is saying that we need to get away from that. Um, I totally disagree. We need to enshrine it so that uh, cultural land owning groups or land stewarding groups never lose control over the resource. Because uh, in the Pacific, land is our, our only resource really, uh, our main resource along with people, people and land, and the resources that come from land and from the seas. So what we are trying to do now, what I am trying to do is prepare a package of legislative reform. One will be a significant uh, bit of legislation which basically turns all land that is not leased currently in Vanuatu, uh, create a new category of interest in land which is customary land which is basically freehold inalienable. You can never lose it because 
at the moment the constitution says that all land is held under custom, but there is no legal status, no legal interest. So we're getting people who lose their land because an individual out of the tribe goes and negotiates something outside to a title, and before the people know about it, the, the, the land is leased out by the administrators in the capital. So we need to get around that process, so we create a new category of uh, custom land, a new legal status, and then create a process whereby you can lease that land, uh, but it has to go through uh, a group, a landowning group, and the group being the, the uh, land holding entity. Uh, not using models that have failed from Papua New Guinea, of, uh, not, not, but trying to look at the models that have worked, and one of the models that has worked quite well is uh, ideas of land councils from Northern Australia, for example, where the only way to access land is if the majority of the members of the identified landowning group agree that on all aspects, which means a much greater role for government in advising landowners on financial, legal, all aspects of uh, land dealing. And in fact, in our constitution, that is the role that government has. It has to ensure that all land dealings are the, in are the interest of the individual, the community, the people of Vanuatu and the nation. So really strengthening that role of government as a advisory and uh, oversight on land dealings to make sure that they are in the interests of the landowners when they happen. So that is something that uh, I think we need to move towards in the Pacific. We definitely need to maintain customary land because it's the only way we're going to survive into the future. Is WTO and free market economics Incompatible or compatible with Vanuatu culture? Um, I would say that uh, we have been trading for a long time, for, for uh, centuries, thousands of years. We have been trading within Vanuatu, outside of Vanuatu. And uh, that context of trading is something we need to promote uh, as something we are quite familiar with. However, in the new development models of trying to promote our own productive capacity in terms of uh, industry, in terms of uh, meeting the, the modern day demands of our populations in terms of consumption and so on. We need to be very careful that uh, we maintain control over what we produce and what we consume. And free trade doesn't support that kind of idea. Uh, I am one notorious critic of uh, the World Trade Organization and PACER Plus and all these so-called free trade agreements. Once again, this is a view completely opposed to what the New Zealand government is trying to promote. But basically, uh, our, the big uh, production economies in terms of consumer goods in our region is New Zealand and Australia. We have very limited capacity. We need to develop that capacity. Free trade agreements will not allow us to develop that capacity. We need to be able to stop having to buy stuff from Australia and New Zealand and produce it ourselves. And the only way we can do that is the same way New Zealand has done it, the same way Australia has done it, is through protectionism. And the question comes back to New Zealand and Australia is why are you trying to make us open up our economies now when the way you develop was through protectionism? Uh, we need to be able to say, okay, in these sectors, we are now protecting our local industry from imports so that we can develop those capacities. And that is something that uh, I will continue to push for.